This is Five on Your Side at Five, focused on you. We continue our weather alert tonight for this dangerous heat wave. All week long, we have been dealing with a heat index in the triple digits. Thanks so much for joining us. I'm Kelly Jackson. And I'm Mike Bush. The heat will continue through Friday evening with an end in sight this weekend. Let's get the latest from Weather First Chief Meteorologist Scott Connell. Scott. And the, the good thing is there is an end in sight. That is good. So we have about 30 more hours of this to go. By midnight tomorrow night, maybe a little sooner, those heat index values will start to drop off. And Saturday into Sunday, much cooler air will arrive into the bi-state region. Unfortunately, we can't say there's anything cool about what's outside right now. You have plenty of sunshine around St. Louis. We pushed our temperatures close to 100 or slightly above in the case of St. Louis. That was Arnold. This is Highland, Illinois. No matter where you go, it's pretty bright around our area. The nearest thunderstorms just south of the five on your side area down across southern Missouri and down towards the Ozarks. Current heat indices 111 is what it feels like in St. Louis. That's down from what it was earlier. Most of us are in that 105 to 120 degree range right now. And the 120s are really the areas that have cornfields close by. Rest of the evening, temperatures dropping back through the 90s. It'll still, though, 9 and 10 o'clock tonight in town, feel like it's above 100 degrees. And tonight, the excessive heat warning is causing school districts to make some changes. The high temperatures are putting a strain on bus drivers. Five in your size, Mercedes McKay explains how districts are adjusting to keep students and staff safe. We're doing our best to make everything go as smoothly as possible for our families. From bus delays to early dismissals, the rest of the school week will look a little different for students across the bi-state. Because it's been really hot, most of the buses are not air conditioned. Those drivers are on there for several hours a day. George Sells with St. Louis Public Schools says it's all about being proactive. That's why the district sent a letter to families Thursday morning to make other plans for the next two days, since bus routes could see delays from 30 minutes up to two hours long. So we just wanted to prepare our families in case we had fewer drivers than bus routes that it could slow things down. A handful of drivers called out sick due to the extreme heat, which affected a dozen bus routes Thursday afternoon. The more people you're missing, then you're having to double back and cover those routes, and that can take time sometimes. St. Louis Public Schools isn't the only district in our region feeling the effects of this extreme heat. Here in St. Charles County, the Francis Howell School District also had to make adjustments. If we want our students to be safe on the buses, we need our drivers to be safe. And to keep them safe, the district is dismissing all middle and high schools 45 minutes early for the rest of the week. Uh, the reason for that was really thinking about our bus drivers. Um, having that additional 45 minute break between their first and their second tiers will allow them to stop at a building, go in, fully let their bodies cool down and rehydrate. Superintendent Kenneth Rumpus got a taste of just how warm these buses can get after riding one in the peak of the heat. Uh, I wanted to know what our students are experiencing for their ride home, but also wanted to know what our bus drivers and our monitors are experiencing when they're on the buses for three to four hours a day. While we may get some relief from the high temps soon, district officials say one thing is always top of mind. So it's all about safety. Mercedes McKay, five on your side. And St. Louis Public Schools says that if your child has to stay at school longer because of a bus delay, they will be in the AC with water, snacks, and supervision. And we have a full list of affected districts on our website under the As Seen on TV section. For, more, for information on keeping cool, just text the word HEAT to 314-425-5355. A St. Louis man is dead after an officer involved shooting in Madison County, Illinois, late last night. Police say he tried to take off from a traffic stop in a police car and ended up getting run over. Just hours ago, we got new details from Illinois State Police. They're handling the investigation and five on your side's Travis Cummings is in studio with what we've learned. Travis. Mike Kelly, police say this all happened in less than 10 minutes. The man killed was identified as 28 year old Kyrie V. Myers. His body and a stolen Washington Park police vehicle were found early this morning. State police say just before 11 last night, a Fairmont City police officer was pulling a vehicle over on Illinois Route 203. Now moments before before the traffic stop, Myers got out of the vehicle and began walking on the road. Then a Washington Park police officer arrived to assist the Fairmont City officer. When the Washington Park officer approached Myers, he ran and the officer chased him. The officer and Myers then got into a physical altercation. Myers got away, stole the officer's squad car 
and then rammed into a pillar near the officer. During the incident, the Washington Park officer fired his gun, striking Myers in the squad car. But Myers continued to flee the scene at a high rate of speed. He eventually got out of the squad car and was hit then by another police car and a passing driver. Myers died there on the scene. No word on the condition of the officer. And we did reach out to the Illinois State Police with follow up questions and we're waiting to hear back. Tonight, we're learning more about the man who died while in custody at the St. Louis Justice Center. Carlton Bernard died Sunday. He had been in the jail since late June. The city's medical examiner tells us she has ruled out any trauma as the cause of death. The official cause will be released after toxicology results come back in six to eight weeks. His death was just days before several inmates attacked a correctional officer in the jail. There is an investigation into that attack. Tonight, St. Louis County Police say they are dealing with a new crime trend, people failing to pull over for traffic stops. Our Christine Byers is here to tell us what the police chief has to say about all this. Christine? Mike, St. Louis County Police Chief Ken Gregory says people have taken off from him, his officers almost 2,000 times since they started tracking the data about a year ago. And he says it's getting worse. Gregory delivered the news that 1,883 drivers have failed to pull over for county officers so far this year during a crime commission meeting Thursday in St. Louis County. He says the bulk of the failure to yields happen in Jennings, with 536 people fleeing from traffic stops. Unincorporated North St. Louis County has had 519 cases, and the 4th Precinct in South St. Louis County has racked up 302. Chief Gregory says there's not much his officers can do because they don't pursue for low level offenses. He says that word has gotten out among criminals. So what's his message for the public? Citizens out there are not respecting law enforcement. These guys are running crazy in the street and that it's not the police chasing them. Uh, so just be careful, be on the lookout for speeding vehicles. I, I do it myself at every stop sign, every stop light I come to. I'm just not hesitant jumping out there because you never know what's coming through the intersection. So just be more aware of the traffic out there. Chief Gregory says officers also can't just write down license plates and contact drivers after the fact because it's not considered an immediate stop in the eyes of the law. We also asked the department for their total number of traffic stops, which shows people are fleeing from them about 7% of the time. Christine, thanks. Well, in a little over an hour, former President Donald Trump is expected to turn himself into a Georgia jail. Mr. Trump is facing charges for trying to overturn the 2020 presidential election results in that state. He's already agreed to a $200,000 bond. He'll be booked into the Fulton County Jail. He will also be fingerprinted and have his mugshot taken. Outside the jail, Trump supporters have been rallying behind him. Authorities are preparing for his arrival and extra security precautions are being taken. No other prisoners will be inside the jail when he arrives and there will be a secure entrance. The Fulton County District Attorney has requested the trial to start on October 23rd. New details in a plane crash that killed a Russian mercenary, what U.S. intelligence officials say caused it. Fact versus fiction. Our Verify team looks into abortion claims from the GOP presidential candidates. 